Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Nick White from Kin and Carta. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Nick White, a data strategy director at Kin and Carta. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Nick, hello and welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here. So you're a data strategy director at Kin and Carta. So tell me about Kin and Carta. What is the company? What is it you, they do? Yeah, Ken and Carta is a digital transformation agency. Uh, we are B Corp certified, so we do care about planet, people, and profit. Um, we kind of do the full stack. So it's not just data, it's applications, it's cloud modernization, it's managed services. So, you know, over the last few years, as we formed, we've really created kind of this digital stack that, you know, can do strategy and impl implementation across all digital products. Oh, I love that. So tell me a little bit about why um, you became certified like that. What's Why is that important to Kin and Carta? Because we want to use technology to make the world better for everybody. Um, you know, it, there is a place where profit and revenue can be responsible. And we truly believe in that. And that's what we want to be a part of. So that's why we went for it. And we are the first B Corp certified company on the London Stock Exchange. So it's something we're pretty proud of. And uh, we continue to work with some responsibility um, socially and to the planet. Oh, I really like that. That's great. So tell me then, so what do you do for Kid and Carter? What's your typical work week look like? Well, I'm on a lot of Zooms like we are now. <laughs> um, Mostly I am coaching people. I'm working with clients in the space of data transformation. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of thought that goes into how do you approach emerging technologies? So not only do I um, run our data strategy practice, but I also run our innovation lab where mm -hmm. you know we kind of go into emerging technologies and mm -hmm. you can't ignore generative AI, um, chat GPT and all this stuff coming out you know, from everybody. So we've spent a lot of time, quite frankly, trying to figure out how do we bring that to yeah. our clients and how do we work better with it? So it's it's a little atypical, but because this is a watershed moment, I think, for AI. But in general, I'm usually coaching clients or internal folks on how we get the most out of data. Oh, I love that a lot. So so tell me, Nick, was this the dream when you were about six years old? Just very young, you know, did you dream like, I'm going to be a data strategy director when I grow up? What no, was the dream? Uh, the dream, <laughs> man, that's a good question. I think I always wanted to be a doctor. Oh, um, uh -huh. And I actually went into uh, university pre-med, but then I didn't really <laughs> like science classes. So oh. <laughs> instead, yeah. I just mar I married a doctor. Um, so <laughs> I just skipped out on that. And, you know, I took some I took some programming classes in high school, like old timey programming classes, like it shows my age, you know, we were in AS 400s doing things like that. Um, and I just kind of ran away from it in college. So I actually have my bachelor's degree in photojournalism with minors yeah. in English and poli sci. So I kind of yeah. went the complete opposite way yeah. in a way. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's fascinating. Do you find that you use that uh, those skills that you learned in that degree still? I didn't know it at the time, but 
what I enjoy doing is telling stories. And I think that's what data exists to do um, if you're using it correctly. So I didn't know at the time, but I was training to one, investigate and find root causes and insights and all of that stuff. And then, you know, just with my strong past background in system thinking and, um, yeah. you know, math, math, I just kind of stumbled my way and didn't even know it. It was, oh, I, it makes no sense, but it makes a lot of sense when you talk to people that are in data now. Sure. Absolutely. You know, so, so tell me then what was, so after college, what was the first job and, and what was, how did you start transitioning into data? <laughs> My first job out of college was um, at a general nutrition center, so a vitamin mm -hmm. store. And it's just, you know, it was something I, you know, I graduated in 2003 from college and, you know, not a ton of jobs were out at that time. So I kind of did the retail. Um, I eventually made my way into newspaper advertising. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I did some sales, but I started to get more into the pricing realm because mm -hmm. I was, I was the whiz kid at Excel and, you know, everybody needed help with their proposals. So that's kind of how I started to sneak my way into it was through marketing, advertising and pricing. And that's where I spent some of the formidable, formidable years trying to figure out like, what's the right price for advertising? Hmm. That's a very handy skill. We're still, we, you know, we, everybody works on that all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then what, so then what did you do? So then I ended up, um, at a, they call them coupon clearing houses, but you know, mm -hmm. it was, it was related to the same industry, but I, I started to be part of the verification and fraud. So like now I was going from kind of reactive and, you know, mm -hmm analysis to like proactive like how do we put the systems in place and how do we do sure. all that stuff and really you know from there i started to think there has to be a way where you know back it only had to happen once to me but i happen it happens all the time where somebody walks in a room and they say hey here's the data and somebody that had nothing to do with the data goes i know that's wrong because of xyz and that mm -hmm. started to push me in towards more product management, governance, quality, because mm -hmm. I'm like, I want to fix that problem because I think nobody's paying attention to it. So that's when I got into a little bit of big data and helping to support, you know, retail and CPG clients and then made my way, you know, from there to, you know, product ownership and really leaning into that mindset and trying to apply it to data and governance and quality. Um, so, you know, just kind of made my way through retail and CPG and um, made my way finally to, you know, Nike, where I was a data governance director. And like, that was my job. Um, yeah. So I, I really leaned into it there. Um, and then what I, what I noticed there was, uh, you know, data governance, all these terms we're talking about, even my title are very nebulous. Like, what do they mean? Um, and at the end of the day, I just kind of walked away from it saying, you know, it, it's more about enabling people with data than it is about governing data. And that's kind of, that's what I brought to Ken and Carta was just this mindset of, you know, we need to, I call it data product enablement, but we need to find a way to make the data have value. So that was, that was 20 years of me just kind of weaving and bobbing and doing all sorts of different things around data sure. to just end up trying to, you know, bring it back to kind of my journalism roots and setting context and telling the story and making sure everybody understands the story. You know, I, I, I love that path. As you say, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense and it does make so much sense. Right. And through a lot of these interviews, you know, I'm finding that following passion and being curious really lends to, um, to exactly where you are. Right. Um, and to a successful career path. And just being open to learning and exploring Absolutely. it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I always say it's curiosity and being able to make logical connections. And then you have you mm -hmm. have the right mindset for this type of work, in my opinion. Makes a lot of sense. So tell me, Nick, what was the biggest lesson so far in your career? Something that you use daily. 
Oh man. Um, I, I have learned that it's not so much about being great at everything. It's about leaning into the things that you're great at. Mm -hmm. And I think the more that people be themselves and lean into their strengths and kind of minimize the weaknesses that come with those strengths, mm -hmm. that's where I've started. That's where I feel like my career has started to really take off and I felt more at ease and like, I know what I'm doing and I know where I'm going is just following what, you know, who I am, which is I'm yeah. not a serious guy. I I'm kind of laid back and it, it works with people, it, you know, and also just the idea of, I'm, I'm good at math. I'm good at logic puzzles and Hey, just lean into that. Other people could be good at other things and it's not going to matter if you're good at, you know, those or not. Oh, I like that, that a lot. Um, yeah, so many, and you know, I've made that mistake too, you know, to try and be great at everything. <laughs> just think that I should have the answer to everything. Um, yeah. it, it, <laughs> <laughs> and that never did me any good. <laughs> never will either, nope. as far no. as I know. <laughs> so, so I love that. So tell me then, Nick, what's your definition of data and how do you work with it? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, data is information, um, full stop. Like, that's what it is. Um, it's not this thing that, you know, is in a database it's not just digital data. It's not just things in rows and columns. You know, like I've, I've had discussions, well, is, you know, there's content and there's data. I'm like, eh, content is data. Like it's information. It, it's so to me, data is all of the things that we talk about, all of the things that we care about with around a business. And it, it's just, it's information. Like, and yeah. I wish people knew that more and weren't as scared. That's why I'm so passionate about like, we have to demystify it and we have to make people just know, hey, like data doesn't come out of thin air. Somebody created it and now you're using it. So let's just describe what's happening. That's it. Ah, oh, that's really, that's really nice. Uh, and how do you work with it daily in your job? Yeah, I mean... Today, I, I've been focused a lot on the data strategy and getting all the pieces in place. So I'm super focused on probably more of the decision science, which is like this old thing, but then now it's kind of new, it's back and it's got a different branding, just like what, what the heck was a data scientist back in the day? But like, in my mind, it's how do I try to connect business outcomes and what people want to happen? to the data that they're using to drive towards those. So a lot mm -hmm. of my work is kind of in between the lines and just trying to say, hey, you know, if you want to achieve this, you know, did you know it's, you know, impacted by this? And at the end of the day, data's answering questions or automating processes. So what are the questions you need to answer? So a lot of my time is just trying to de data data stuff and just say, hey, right. It's information, it's answering questions, and it should be a part of driving business. It's not this separate thing. So a lot of my time is spent talking to, you know, leading teams and making mm -hmm. sure that we're, we're hitting the mark when we're building something and also helping clients to kind of go from, you know, what I would call is like a gaseous state of like, I think I know what I need to do to like, at least, you know, a semi-solid state where it's like, yes, that's what we should do with data because- I, I'm sure you've seen it, Shannon, but like the statistics are stark at how much gets invested and how little gets rolled out into production or adds value. So that's, I am right in there trying to do stuff that uh, I would probably sleep better if I, if I didn't get in there. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launch pad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTalks for 20% off your purchase. Well, I, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit because you brought up all of these fun data keywords data strategy, data governance. 
we get a lot of questions, you know, what's the difference between a data strategy, data management, data governance? What are those things? I don't know if there is, you know, I think that's why I run away from all of those terms if I can, mm -hmm. like data management, it's a thing, right? Like mm -hmm. you're, you're managing data, you're doing that stuff, you know, when I work with clients, it's like, well, you could say governance establishes the policies and then stewardship is the actual, you know, doing it. And then like, sometimes they throw a business enablement part of it. And mm -hmm. I really just try to knock all those down and say, hey, that's one thing is like, it should be about ensuring that when you're building data things, they're being used and they're adding value. And mm -hmm. how do you do that? You do that by understanding the data and knowing when it's good or not and how to use it. So to me, I just like, I run away from some of those terms because I don't know when you hear strategy, Shannon, you might be like, oh, these are the guys that think, tell us what to do. And like, they're, right. you know, everybody does straight strategy. So that's why like, I don't even like my title sometimes. I'm just like, yeah, like, you know, yeah. so in my opinion, cut it any way you need to, but at the end of the day, you got to focus on value and you want to build things the right way that's extensible. Yeah. And I don't care what you call it, you got to do it. Do you have a favorite story of a client finding value in their data? Um, yeah, there's, so I spent, I spent some time, um, you know, at Nike. And what I would say is, they've done really well with data and they're way ahead of their competitors, you know, in the space. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I enjoyed the most was, you know, and I called it KPI alignment, where you just kind of say, these are the things you're measuring and this is how it impacts your job. Like, so is it actually helping you mm -hmm. to impact the business? Are you con in control over it? And I think, you know, having an opportunity to just focus on, you know, our supply chain, we focused on supply chain K KPIs and just focusing on the fact that, hey, like if you don't do the legwork to say, we want to do X and this is your role in impacting X all the way down to the person that's planning things, you miss out. So I just, the idea of a KPI tree to just illuminate this fact to everybody that was my biggest win. And it really made me think about like, Hey, I'm assuming this, but right. everybody misses it. So yeah. that was really cool for me to have an impact on the organization, kind of stand up this new capability for them. And I love that. Um, very good example. Uh, so, uh, Tell me, Nick, then, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Um, that de depends what you define is, is, as a uh, president once said. Um, I think it's changing. Uh, look, if people aren't aware generative AI is going to reduce and change drastically what engineers of all kinds are doing, you're missing out. Like people can, you know, to use a very technical term, poo poo it. But at the end of the day, there are practical applications that are going yeah. to change the way that we interact with data. Um, even think about, you know, the way that a traditional data management professional would try to manage data. Like mm -hmm. I don't have to have rows and columns, I don't have to have a schema. We're talking about just semi-structured data and mm -hmm. a well-refined prompt will do a lot of, of what we're struggling with today. So mm -hmm. I think I think it's gonna become, you know, the idea of less, you know, making the donuts and you know, more trying to figure out which donuts to make, if that makes sense, because yes. I and I would, I want everybody to use data. Like this should be democratizing to everybody. Yeah. Um, so in my mind, you know, I probably didn't answer your question. I think they will change. 
Um, and I think, you know, people shouldn't be scared um, of losing jobs, but rather the fact that they will change and you will be able to have more impact and you'll be able to focus on creative value, you know, things like frameworks, mm -hmm. things like that, that really, you know, tell the computers how to interpret it. So that's my answer. I mean, it's so weird. I don't even know how to answer it right now. I just feel like it will change, things, but yeah, things are changing so fast. Yeah. You know, it's just, it is hard to keep up. Um, but uh, yeah. Do you think that generative AI will help uh, companies use more data? I'm really encouraged by um, almost the no code solution. We're, we're seeing some of them come out, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Was it like, I think Databricks already is planning. It's going to be all built in and there's going to be a side panel. And like, I can go in as somebody who hasn't coded in a long time. And probably, you know, that's yeah. when I knew it was going to be big is I, mm -hmm. I took a few classes in it and I was like, oh, like I'm right back in it because yeah. it's just about structuring thoughts. So I think it will make people be able to have more data, you know, but then again, it comes with, all of the work to make sure that data is correct. Um, so I, I, I feel like maybe yeah. in our space of data management, more, but different yeah. in engineering and pipelining, yeah. different, probably less and different. So, you know, it's just, I don't know if you've played with it, but it is just amazing. I have, yeah. yeah. So, and I, I'd love to capture that um, you're still learning. You're still, out there we yeah we were asked um we were at, one of the guys in marketing asked me and my um co-director of our labs hey like what's a good idea using generative ai for next year's austin city limits or south by southwest one of the, i don't it doesn't matter like we're not a band so yeah. south by southwest um it's like i cannot answer what's going to be cool in a year i can't even answer what's going to be cool in three you know three, three months. months like I, I feel like okay you know there's something there with the metaverse and ar and you know um spatial computing there's probably something there right like yeah. are we all going to turn into tony stark and iron man probably some version of it sometime in the near future but like i we laughed because um the same guy asked us the same question to in two different meetings and we said almost the exact same thing like yeah. no idea what's cool yeah yeah it's so true um so what advice then would you look, give to people who are looking to get into some area of data i i mean maybe this is the journalist in me but you know don't bury the lead. Don't be um, don't be distracted by shiny objects. Like there are a lot of cool things, but I keep going to this the fact of, you know, what's the problem space? What's the outcome? That's where humans are going to like exist in this area is how do we how do we tell a computer how to work with data, interpret data? And that's why I'm so big on like, I was even telling our CEO, I was like, decision science is the next thing. Call it whatever you is, but whatever it is, but the people that will make sure that the thing is right versus just there are the mm -hmm. people that are going to be needed. And we're, pro we're in super short supply of those people. Very, very true. I love that, that's great advice. Well, Nick, I would be remiss if I didn't ask, you know, it, how would people uh, find you and solicit services from Ken and Carta? Absolutely. You can go to our website, which will provide you with this. Um, you can also reach to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I don't ignore messages unless, hey, you're trying to sell me something. But if you need something, <laughs> we're we're always there. And I think we have a ton of terrific information, case studies. You know, you can go through the the website, and it'll it'll tell you a lot about kind of how we've existed as this boutique digital consulting firm, and kind of 
found our way to having an identity. So it would be great if people went there and you can see some of the blogs I've published and you can see some of the case studies that we've worked on. Um, and that would be terrific. Oh, that'd be great. And yeah, we'll get all those URLs from you and get that posted to the website when we publish the podcast. So Nick, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I, I love talking about this stuff. So it's really no, it's not even hard for me to do this. <laughs> well, it definitely shows and really appreciate it. So uh, thank you. And to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest in podcasts and in the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time and stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank <music> you.